Hi, welcome to Patrick E. Parshal. The idea of this session is to tell you a few shortcut methods of how to solve the questions. So we'll have a number of videos as such. Go to those videos, understand the methods. First try to solve on your own. It's always good to solve on your own. Then look at the solution, understand the solution and see if you can implement the same solution to different kind of problems. But the more you practice the method, the better you'll be at it. If you don't practice it, you will not be beneficial. Right? Uh, you can pause the video if you want in order to solve the video and then look at the solutions. This will predominantly help you for CAD but will also help you for other exams because methods will be used for any exam rather than. So we look at the first question, fx is equal to 1 upon 1 plus x. Then f of 3x, express in term of fx will be. I normally recommend, uh, no, try solving on your own obviously, take your time, try to solve on your own. I normally recommend take values, say if x is equal to 1, so what will be fx? 1 upon 1 plus 1 which is half. Right. So, what should be f of 3x? If you look at f of 3x will be 1 upon 1 plus, I mean 3, if f of 3x will be f of 3, f of 3 will be 1 plus 3 which will give you 1 upon 4. So, you need to see which option will give you 1 upon 4. For example, first option will be 3 into half, 3 upon 2, not the answer. Second option is fx is half, 3 plus 2 into half, right. So if you look at it, it becomes half upon 4 which is 1 upon 8. Again, cannot be the answer. We need the answer is 1 upon 4. C option, half upon 3 minus 2 into half. Right? It becomes half upon 2 which is 1 upon 4. Looks fine. Check the fourth option also. Half 2 minus 3 into half. Right? So 3 upon half is 3 upon 2, 1 and half. So 2 minus half okay, becomes half. So it becomes half upon half, which becomes 1. The only option that gives you 1 upon 4 is C option. You can directly mark the answer. So one of the good ways of trying to solve sums, okay, where there are variables, substitute simple values and try to figure out the answers. So here we took x equal to 1, we got a value of fx. f of 3x will be 1 upon 4. See which option will give you 1 upon 4? That will be the answer. Useful for a lot of sums with variables in it. When a ratio of ages, try to solve this. Now, if you look at, uh, you can pause and try to solve. I'm just looking at the solution. Man and wife is 4 is to 3. And after the son was born, it becomes 9 is to 7. Remember the difference in the man and wife's age will always remain the same, no matter how many years have passed. So here 9 and 7 difference is 2, here difference is 1. The first step is to make the difference same. So I will make this difference same by multiplying the first ratio by 2. So it becomes 8 is to 6 and 9 is to 7. Now the difference is 2 and 2, same. That's what we want because the difference in man and wife has to be same. Now they say 4 years later, from here to here it is plus 1. But they clearly mentioned it's 4 years later. That means it should be plus 4. Then multiply by 4 is what you should do. So when you multiply by 4, the current age becomes into 4, which is 36 years for a man and 28 years for a woman. And a boy will be 4 years. Boy 4 years. Girl will be 0 years. He's just born. The man is 36 years and the wife is 28 years. If I add this total, okay, 36 plus 32 becomes 68. I want the average is 18 years, average of 4 people. I want the average is 18 years for 4 people, which is equal to total upon 4. So total will become 72. 18 into 4, 72. So to go 72, I have to increase by plus 4. That will be 1 more year, because after 1 year, each one will become plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. So how many years after the birth of daughter, the average age of the man, wife and two children be 18 years? It is 1 is the answer. That will be the answer. I repeat, the ratio of man and woman is difference is 1 and 9 and 7 is difference is 2, 4 and 3. But man and woman difference will always remain the same no matter how many years pass. So to make the difference to I multiply the first ratio by 2, you get 8 and 6. You get 8 and 6 in first, 9 and 7 in, six in the second. 
difference is same. Now to go to 8 to 9, you need plus 1, right? But we know it's after 4 years, plus 4. So to multiply by 4. So the current age of man, woman becomes 36 and 28. And the boy will be 4 years when the daughter is born. So girl will be 0. Total is 68. I want a total 72. So which will be plus 4. Or you can also do 68 upon 4. 17 is the current average age. To go to 18 current average age, you need one more year. So plus 1 is the answer. Right angle triangle given by AB equal to BC. Try to solve. So you are drawing a parallel lines out here, first of all, parallel to BC. Right. So if you look at, uh, if I take this extreme line BC as 6 root 2 and this point as A as 0, I mean this is all in AP, remember that, all this length of the line will be in AP, the extreme point is 0 and 6 root 2. So the average is 0 plus 6 root 2 upon 2, 3 root 2. Right. Remember, 0 is the extreme point, BC is the extreme point, 1 in the side, and they are all equally distributed, so 12 segment lines. So 3 root 2 is the average for 12 segment lines. So total length will be 12 into 3 root 2, which will become 36 root 2, the option, straight away, right. Or you can say the middle point out here, okay, is if you look at triangle, when you join the midpoints, it becomes half of the third side, so it becomes C root 2. So the average is 3 root 2, it's an arithmetic progression, so middle line is 3 root 2. So total will be average into number of lines, so n into average is total, so that becomes 36 root 2. Try solving this. So as I said, always uh, use the options to generalize the value when they are large terms, 99 terms. If you take 99 terms as n, let's say n terms, the first option will become n plus 1 minus 1 upon 2 raised to n. Second option becomes n plus 2 minus 1 upon 2 raised to n. Third option n plus 1 upon 2 raised to n plus 1, sorry, plus 1 upon 2 raised to n. Fourth option is n plus 1 minus 1 upon 2 raised to n plus 1. So there are the four options I get. Say say n equal to 1, the answer should be 3 upon 2 for first term. So put n equal to 1 and see. So if I put n equal to 1, what do I get? 2 minus 1 upon 2 raised to 1, which is 2. This is 3 upon 2. This satisfies. This becomes n is 1, so 3 minus 1 upon 2, right, n is 1, this becomes 5 upon 2, does not satisfy. This becomes again 3 minus plus 1 upon 2 square, 2 raised to 1, sorry, right, n is uh, 1, remember that, 1 plus 1 is 2, sorry, 2 plus 1 plus half, 5 upon 2 again, does not satisfy. And this becomes 2 minus 1 upon 2 square 4 again does not satisfy. The only option that gives you 3 upon 2 is A option that will be the answer when you put n equal to 1. If you want to confirm you can put n equal to 2 also and check out. If you do want to confirm you can mark the first answer. If you just want to confirm you can put n equal to 2 also and check whether the answer matches. Yeah, try solving this. Again, there are variables out here. Whenever there are variables, you can always substitute simple values and find out. So, say I put a equal to 0 and b equal to 0, what do you get? x equal to 1, y equal to 2. If I plot it on a graph, 
So x equal to 1 will be plus 1 and minus 1. This is plus 1, minus 1. y equal to 2 will be 2 and minus 2. So 2 and minus 2. So this whole length will become 4. This length will become, breadth will become 2. So area of a rectangle will become 8. So when I take a0 and b0, my answer should become 8. That's what it should be. Right? 4 into 2, 8. Substitute check out. You will realize that first 4 into this is 1 into 2, 2, 8. Second also 4 into 1 into 2, 8, 8 and 4. So D option ruled out. So you only left with C option. Right. Now try to work on D next. Suppose I put A as 1 and let's say B as 1. That's one way of doing it. Right. If I take A as 1 and B as 1. Put the diagram. So I put A as 1, that means x plus 1 equal to 1. So x can be 0 or x can be minus 2. So minus 2 plus 1 will also give you 1. So 2 or minus 2. Okay. If I took A as 1 and B as 1, so x can be 0 and minus 2. And if I take B as 1, y minus 1 equal to 2. You can make out y can be 3, 3 minus 1 is 2, right? And to get another 2, you can get y as minus 1. Again, the area, if you look at this is 4, this is 2, the area of rectangle is 8. If I take a1, b1, right? Here, you will get 0. B option, you get 0 because a minus 1 is 0, cannot be the answer. Right. Here you get 2 into 1. Here also you get 8. So again, A and C options are possible. Two options are possible. Both give you answer 8. If you take similarly, let's say B2 if I take. Okay, I take A0 and B2. I'm just taking. So I get both different answers. A0, if I draw it on a graph, will be x plus 1 minus 1. x plus 1, x minus 1. If I put A0. And B, I am putting 2. If I put B2, right, you will get Y as uh, Y minus 2 as 2. Y can be 4 or Y can be 0. So Y can be 4 or Y can be 0. So again, the area of rectangle becomes 8. 2 by 4, 8. Only C option satisfies. A option doesn't satisfy because it becomes 0. 2 minus 2 becomes 0. So answer is C. I did a mistake out here. I could have directly taken the third from directly from first. I could have taken the third. When you're using the option, check whether all the options use the different answers. You don't have to check again and again. If I have taken from first to third because the option gives you different values, I would have directly got the answer eight without taking a step. But yeah, going back, whenever you have variables, one good way is try to assume values and then try to sort. That's a good way to go about it. Normally, you get in the first step, you will get the answer immediately. If you don't get more, you maximum will take two steps to get the answer, right? One method to solve, the other methods to solve this is, but one method in terms of solving this is, right? You, are, you can also remove the more and take it as plus and minus. For example, you take x plus a mod equal to 1. So when you open it, it becomes x plus a can be plus 1 or x plus a can be minus 1. Or x could be 1 minus a or x could be minus 1 minus a. And if you look at difference between these two is 2. Similarly, if you take y, y will become 2, I mean, plus b, or it will become minus 2, minus b, minus 2 plus b, sorry, y. Look at difference between these two is 2. So, length is 4, breadth is 2, the area will always be 8, 4 into 2, 8. This is one more way you can solve this sum. Right, I hope this helps. Uh, We'll again release one more session in next week on the same time. Thank you.